Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another exciting edition of the Amigos Everything Amiga Podcast. Yes. I'm your good pal, Amigo Aaron. Joined today in light of our friend the boat, who is celebrating his anniversary. Uh, of, I think it's the 10th anniversary, uh, the Brant. Uh, but filling in today, a man who just recently also celebrated anniversary, the Brent. Give it up. Well, it's been months and months, but yeah. It hasn't been that long ago, has it? October 3rd. That's not months and months. That's, that's not even two months. So coming fresh off his anniversary, Amigo Brent. Now, we're glad you could join us this week on Amigo's Everything Amigo podcast because, Brent, yes. it's Edutainment Week. Yes. This is a... This is a gimmick you yourself came up with, the edutainment category, and this, I've been told, will be the last foray for a while that the Amigos will be taking into the education uh, area. Uh, what do you think that draws you personally to the edutainment region of Nothing gaming? draws me to edutainment. Okay. Edutainment is, is learning through pain. The games will punish you. If you do learn, and even if you don't learn, <laughs> the game will just, the games are out to hurt you in an educational way. Well, and hurt they do. Yes. I mean, it's funny thing is I've bad mouth that you came in every week we've done it, and I've enjoyed I think almost every game we've done. But <laughs> to every rule, there is an exception, and <laughs> we will get to that after. Time a while. to end that streak. Now, before we move on to the news, Brent, I wanted to ask you since you don't get you don't get in the big chair too often these days. Now, do you remember the last time you filled in for the boat and what we were talking about? It wasn't too long ago, was it? No, it's been very recent. Uh, what were we doing? Do you recall? Oh, I don't know. I just, you know, stumbled through something. <laughs> Knucklehead. But you, I knew. Oh, so you remember? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> listen, you stumbled. What do you want from me? I can't remember. I uh, I was pleased that you were going to be in this week. Though, I do believe it was Primal Rage as uh, John just reminded Oh, you just, us. yeah, you just brought it up. <laughs> Primal Rage. It was good, too. Do you I realize mean, that okay. uh, this is the second show in a row you've been on that involved a dinosaur? And um, also, if you'll recall, you also filled in for Jurassic Park. Yes. So I'm starting to think that maybe Boat has a just phobia. doesn't like dinosaurs. Yeah, he's got a phobia. We figured it out. <laughs> oh, there you go. You know, uh, there's not much news about dinosaurs this week, but there is some news about the Amiga. Let's go there now, shall we? Bam! Amiga News. Amiga News. <laughs> We're going to be drawing our news straight from the horse's mouth here, straight from our Discord channel here. Uh, the Amiga's Discord channel. My God, if you're not here, what are you doing? Right, Brent? Probably not being there. This thing's awesome, and this is where we get all the cutting-edge news. We're going to start off right here, and I watched this, uh, the Brent. This is the new case from Steve, or the new uh, monitor, I should say, from Steven. Uh, this is his big deal here. We all know... Stephen from his work uh, with uh, the Checkmate cases. You know, the yes. Checkmate. Everybody loves the Checkmate. Then there was the Checkmate Mini or whatever. This is the newest gimmick. The ITX desktop computer case uh, monitor that will fit on top to put your LCD screen in. It's going to be an LCD screen monitor. Well, you know, me and Bo were sort of... We watched this video, and I watched the majority of this. And I thought, I don't know about this one. It's because this thing, he he admits freely that it's two years away. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a two-year away gimmick. Okay. It's not, you're not going to get it anytime soon. Price unknown. I strongly suspect that this is going to be a costly venture. And the reason I think that is, it's custom boards. It's custom cases. They're going to have to be molded plastic cases, and then they're also going to be shipped all over the earth yeah. to get all the stuff put into them. Plus, in case people didn't realize it, there's also this thing called a shortage of everything going yeah. on. And so, uh, even getting these sent over uh, in, in two years may be a struggle, depending on what the, the what goes down. Even the prototyping is going to be expensive. Right. Well, now, you've got to recoup that stuff. So On top of that, you've also got the bit here where... You're trying to please many masters. And so uh, Stephen has got a board here that he's talking about that will 
uh, work in with RGB and HDMI, but it, it doesn't it, currently he has, doesn't have the plans to work it into 15 kilohertz, which is important to Amiga. Uh, if you want to hook it up natively to the machine, now uh, it does support RGB, so you've got that as an option. And he does talk about the possibility of supporting uh, 15 kilohertz. I don't know how big a deal it is, but it probably is a big deal to somebody. With all that said, the Brent. Now you're I know you're not a computer hobbyist, as it were. Correct. What do you think about the proposition of having a custom-made mod, uh, LCD monitor that's deep, uh, sort of like the one in the picture here, to sort of simulate what it would look like uh, in front of a computer uh, to make it sort of look like a, a CRT? Well, I mean, what, where are we going here? Do you think this is? What do you think about this? And be honest. I, I mean, that it's it to say it's a novelty would be quite the understatement. Yeah. Um. I get the point, I do, and I get the appeal, but I mean, you're you're right. This is going to cost a fortune. Yeah. And what kind of price tag can you put on this and still be viable at market? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. I think it's going to cost some dollars. Yeah. Well, so there you go. But you got to give Stephen credit. He's always working an angle. Well, here's the thing. Would I rather this not exist than exist? Yeah. No. So, with that in mind, especially with two years to work on it and think about it, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm on board. The one thing I'll say about this is that Stevens, he dwells in the upper echelons of the boutique Amiga stuff, all right? And so... When you're living up in that world and you're making the money he is, and he sold a bunch of these things, uh, then you've got to you've got to expect that there are people that are going to buy him. They've bought everything else, you know. So I think there's a chance that he's going to get it together. Well, we will see. But I like I do like his uh, gusto, his guts. Uh, he's got a lot. He's got a lot of. Uh, he's got a lot of guts that he would try something yeah. like that. I mean, anyone who's willing to try to put something out there that's new yeah. and, and that could just honestly be a complete failure, but still be willing to put that kind of time and effort into it, gets big thumbs up for me. Now, this I'll be honest with you, I've not seen this yet, but I've heard some people talking about it. This is someone uh, using their Amiga to watch a YouTube video. Now, this is one of those classic videos, as far as I could see. Where it says, hey, you're going to be able to watch a new YouTube video on your Amiga. It sounds great, right? It ain't, you don't just click on that sucker to watch YouTube. There's conversions. Yeah. There's antics, you know. The, now, he's got this condensed in the three minutes, and there you can see him, him doing it. It's kind of neat. So this is this falls under the category, like, party tricks that you can do exactly. with the Amiga. Now, what do you think about that, the Brent? No, that, 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 that's a just cause. That's why are you doing this? Just cause. Yeah. No one's gonna be on a regular basis trying to watch YouTube on their Amiga because because there's no point in that. Do you really think it's no a, one's gonna do it? No, no, no. No one's gonna do it on a regular basis. Yeah. Just to do it to say, look what I can do. I, thumbs up for that. Yeah. But no one's gonna be like, man. All right, time to sit down and watch an hour of YouTube. Let's fire up the Amiga. Not gonna happen. Now, here's another another Chris Edwards join here. Chris is in the chat here. I have not. This has just popped up. I've not seen this. So, Chris, hopefully, you can give me an idea of what you're what you're up to here. The title of the video here is R uh, R A SCSI on the Raspberry Pi SCSI emulator. Intriguing, the yeah, Brent. Interesting. Uh, you've got uh, you know SCSI was one of those um, formats of drives back in the day that were the where they yeah they cost the big money because they were fast. Yeah, I believe you could have seven now. I'll be honest with you, a SCSI was not my bag because I couldn't play in that too, ballpark. Too rich, too rich for yeah. us in most cases. And you had to uh, you had to go in there and really work it out. But it, when you got it done, uh, it worked. Now I've I've got his uh, description here, and it says here uh, it says a SCSI emulator allows you to emulate anything on the SCSI bus with the help of the Raspberry Pi Zero. So he says uh, a CD-ROM ISO, which that, that would be handy, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, a website downloaded and presented as a disk. Interesting. Or a hard drive, even a network card. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So this right here might be something that you want to check out if this is your bag. And, of course, uh, Chris 
is always up to some wacky nefarity. This is a, uh, this looks like his classic bit where he gets deep into it. Oh, yes. Some of the stuff I watch, and I just get nervous. I'm like, my God. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, or it's, I, I'll tell you, I watched I watched Kate Fox take apart a Mac one time. I had the same feeling. It's just like, I was nervous watching it. You take this thing apart. I was like, I can't handle it. Well, it's luckily, you know these people know what they're doing. Yeah. It's not like we're doing it. Exactly. We'd be boned, we'd be boned for starters <laughs> on that. So there you go. If you're, uh, that sounds interesting to you. Listen, the Raspberry Pi Zeros. I don't know. I know you're not the biggest Raspberry Pi guy, but they've got a new version of this thing out. Man, they've really upgraded these things considerably since for the one I got came out, and they're still pretty cheap. I mean, the Raspberry Pi has anything revolutionized retro gaming more than the Pies? I mean, this well, thing has taken over. The the Pies have done so much more than just retro gaming stuff. I mean, like, you could stick them in so many things, whereas. Before you need a whole dedicate, you'd have to make a whole dedicated circuit board, yeah, just to do something that you're fiddling with. Uh, and people in the know can use these for so much things, so many things. I wish, I wish I was good enough to do that kind of crap. Uh, unfortunately, my life is definitely taking me down a different path. But my, I absolutely salute all those who are able to take those Raspberry Pis, integrate them into their projects that they're working on. And it really expands their capability. Well, also, you're dumb as a stump. That, no, that, that's that, not true. That ain't helping. You can't figure nothing out. No, I just, I have I have intelligence in other areas. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. What are they? Uh, I'm getting really good with the Adobe Suite. Now, you are pretty good uh, with that. Okay, you're, you're off the hook. Oh, that's all it took? Because I was hanging you off the drive there, but you, when you came up with something, <laughs> I can't say much. So, let's talk about our good buddy, uh, Doug. From the Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast, uh, I've got to I've got to see this either. Guess what? It's been a busy week of holiday festivities, but and preparation. This is uh, uh, Doug's Amiga Five Hundred Adventures planning our repair, and you know what that means? He's got, he, this is a new mini series he's got uh, where he goes through and messes around with Amiga Five Hundred, tries to figure out what's wrong with it, and if I know Doug is going to go in there and give it the uh, full treatment once yes. he gets in there. Uh, I like watching Doug's stuff, much like Chris, although Doug is a lot more measured uh, normally than Chris is, uh, and uh, uh, I'll look at that. He's chilling. We'll get to that in a minute, too, but uh, uh, always good stuff. This is just a planning video of what he's going to get up to. I will say there, he did have the A500 CD-ROM drive. Those things are not easy to get hold of, and they've got the, you know, that, that was sort of the golden chalice back in the day to get a CD-ROM. It's amazing to me. You think about it now. You can strap a CD-ROM to anything, but back in the uh, in the '80s and early '90s, so if you had an Amiga, it was that was like the big deal. You got to get one of these because all your PC buddies had one, and you were sitting out in the cold. You know yeah. what I mean? And now, who who has a CD-ROM in their system? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, you're Nobody. right. You know, do you remember when you first bought a CD-ROM? And I remember discs? when I bought a first burner. You were the first guy I knew that had a burner. Mm -hmm. Do you recall what you had? What you paid for the discs for that thing? The the blank CDs were ten dollars a piece. Holy smokes! You remember yep. what happened when you made a coaster on those things, don't you? I cried. Yeah, you. Cr <laughs> I cried. See, <laughs> I mean, tears would come down because I mean that's ten bucks a pop. Yeah, I agree. It's tough. It's tough, but still interesting. You know, we were talking about Raspberry Pis a minute ago. I just watched the thing the other day where someone took a, gra a Game Boy Advance and put a Raspberry Pi in it and used it to, as, to run RetroArch. Sure. Natively on the Raspberry Pi through the cartridge slot with some mod minor modifications to it. Pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. If that's, yeah. that's something you can check out, too, if that's your bag. Anyway, I think that's all we got in the news front this week. Kind of a sh low news. Of course, it's the holidays here in the, in the, uh, States, in the yeah. States. So that's the way she goes. So... We do want to, before we move into the game this week, we want to talk a little bit about our good buddy, our good friend, Frank, over at Retro Rewind. We love Frank. We do. Uh, the Brent. He's a good buddy of ours. He's a good guy. On top of everything else, he also has a bunch of high-quality products. Listen, this may be a new uh, a news flash for everyone, but the holidays are here. That's it. We're in them. We're dwelling in them, especially here in the States. And you know what that means? It's time for the gift giving season. You know oh. what I'm saying? Now, here, uh, Aaron, I want to give you this gift. Really? Well, I'm not going to make the obvious joke. We'll get that crap out of here. <laughs> but I will say that when you need quality gifts for the, your Commodore friend or maybe even your Commodore lover in your life, it could happen. This is the place to go. 
Do you need uh, Commodore 64 Flash cards? Who doesn't, right? Kung Fu Flash, whoa, that's right there, there. Do you need, uh, do you need uh, caps to repair your various Commodore machine? Not that kind of cap. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about this kind of leak. Listen, what are you waiting on? This is the part, you got time off from work, right? No. This is, no, not you, but normal oh. people. Oh, yes. This is the ca- recapping <clears throat> season. Get you a bunch of caps from Frank, have him sit down from Canada, take care of your business, De- recap your stuff. Let me tell you, we got. Uh, we're in the arcade here. We got pinball machines. We got arcade machines. When those caps leak out of those things, it's bad time. It's done. They're right. done. We've seen many a, an audio board, William's audio board, get killed by a cap. You got to change those suckers. And your Amigas are no different. Your C64s and different. A lot of those things are manufactured under dubious means. I was also. Do you think Commodore cared about what their system was going to do thirty years from now? Or 30 years from when they were manufactured? Heck no. Well, you so got to get in there. you got a valid point. There. Yeah. <laughs> they, who who does care about that, though? The people who own them now. Well, you may I know, man, this is my baby. Yeah, you got a good point there. And listen, would you take your car to, like, Fast Eddie's used car lot for repairs? Yes, I'm pretty cheap. No, you wouldn't. Oh, no. You would take it to the best repair shop around. And that's also our good buddies at RetroRewind.ca because those guys are getting it done right now. Uh, if you go there, they will. If you send off your various Commodore 64s, your 128s, your CD TVs, your Amigas, they will take care of you right away. Frank will recap your machine. He does repairs. Frank didn't just roll off the turnip truck. He's had decades of experience. He doesn't just he doesn't just sit down at the at the at the board and whether well, it's Radio Shack five dollar solder irons and some old solder. He's got equipment that takes care of this business. He, t- he uses the finest equipment to repair your stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just not some geek up there in a the back room. Now, let me tell you something. If you want your Commodore absolutely destroyed, send them to us. No, yeah, don't send them here. But if you want them fixed properly, RetroRewind.ca is the place to go. Correct, correct. So, we'd like to fully endorse Frank. Please, give him your business during these holidays. Uh, it's the best time of the year to get your stuff done. And if you're not going to have him do it, for God's sakes, do it yourself with the various parts that Frank will provide. And use T-I-S-A-R-G-10. No, don't use, you're shilling the wrong show. A boat, come get him. <laughs> <laughs> with all that said, yes. are you ready to move on to the main event of the evening, the Brent? I know you're excited I'm about not. this, aren't you? No. You're not excited no, about this, this is going one? To, this is going to hurt. Bam, the game of the week, Design Asaurus. Design Asaurus. Oh, I'm going to need a little cough syrup for this one. Now, let me ask you had you ever played Design Asaurus before this week? Absolutely not. Had you heard of Design Asaurus before this week? Uh, I. No. Okay, no one has. All right. <laughs> okay, don't fool yourself. There's no one that's, had, that's heard of it. So, Dinosaurus released in 1989. Uh, Amiga was the last computer to get Dinosaurus. by the way. It yeah. got released on multiple machines, uh, but th- we were the last ones to get it. Uh, you can pick this up on the Apple II. You can pick this up on the Apple II GS. So Apple got the double. I don't know if they're the same one or not. The C64 slash 128 and the DOS version. I've had a chance to look at the DOS version. I, I have looked at DOS. Not so good, Al. It's, it's not- in- did you see the specs for it? It was like 8088. Oh, I mean, they were low. It would literally run on anything. They were low, man. They it, were, it would run on anything. So, uh, th- again, released in 89. This was published by an outfit called Britann- Britannica. I don't know if they're the same. I'm sure they're not the uh, publishing arm of the Encyclopedia Britannica people. Boy, I- if, if they are, I'm going to trust my... my- High school days research a lot less than I do well, now. <laughs> I, I looked up. I was wondering. It's like Britannica, you know, because that's not a name you just pick out. Sure. And so, get this. Sure, the, the, they on the Amiga they had a few published works, including Jigsaw. The oh, had one actually. Jigsaw, the ultimate electronic puzzle. Plus, they had Designosaurus. But if you look further down the pike, right on the PC in two thousand four, I believe it was they published. Prince Interactive, which I would like to see. I have seen that entire game from beginning to end. Prince Interactive? Yes. I watched That's not dude, a game, is it? I watched the dude stream it. It's You're sort kidding of, me. It's sort of like Mist. How was it? Um, It was not the worst thing I've ever was seen. Was it sort of like Mist when you played it? Yes. Oh, my Although God. the puzzles were 
I mean, brain dead simple. Are there lots of good tunes Tons in there? of Prince music. Yeah, well, is Prince Tons involved? Does he actually show up at any uh, point? My understanding is Prince did not actually take part in any aspect of it whatsoever. But I mean, it is endorsed, right? It's got his symbol in the no, front yes, with his no, face and all that stuff. The, the, the Prince hierarchy, The I mean, it is <laughs> officially licensed, yes. Very interesting. They also did a bunch of Berenstain Bears uh, videos. Yeah, I've not seen those. Or I don't know, I guess they're games. So, this was uh, developed by an outfit called Designware. They ain't done nothing for nobody. Designware. This was this is their baby. Now, uh, ultimately, this game was designed by a fellow named Ezra Sidron. <clears throat> this guy's actually kind of interesting because most of what he did was like war games, right? He, uh, not on Mega either. He designed... All these are on other computers. This is the only thing he ever did. In fact, he didn't even get any credits on the Amiga version except for the music. Uh, but he designed this. He did. He also did uh, Jack the Ripper, The War College, uh, UMS Three, UMS. These are all uh, deep involved yeah. war simulators. Brent, <clears throat> um, the producer of the Amiga version of Design of Source was uh, split three ways. You've got uh, Phil Cunningham, Wade Bickle, and Sean Glisson. The coder was Victor. Uh, Vidalvato. Now, none of these guys have done anything on the Amiga, not I mean, as far as I can tell. Uh, the uh, graphics were done by Dana M. Uh, Dominiak, who also worked on Art of Go uh, for graphics, uh, Capone, Creature, Dungeon Quest, POW, and my personal favorite, I had to look this one up, Brent, Sex Vixens from Space. So, dear, she really, when you work the rounds from Design of Saurus to Sex Vixens from Space, you know, you're playing the whole block. Yeah, you know what? That just shows, hey, I am versatile. Is that what that shows? It does, Aaron. It shows me, hey, I want paid. That's what that shows me. <laughs> Show me the money, honey. Uh, the uh, uh, music I mentioned, Ezra Sidron on the Amiga was was, uh, was uh, featured in the credits, as was David Kraft. I, I, I can only hope that Ezra Sidron wrote the Design of Source theme song from the opening menu, which I'm hoping you'll try to sing for us later. No. <laughs> that's the best part of it. Um, the, no, uh, the best part of it is when you shut it down. Oh, now listen, you're showing your cards already without getting there. Uh, the uh, Now get this, the special effects guy, John Schultz, he actually was one of the more decorated people that worked on this. He did uh, uh, audio, apparently, for luminary Amiga titles such as Alien Strike, Libyans in Space, you know that one was solid. And my personal favorite, Space Spuds. So you got Space Spuds coming at you. Uh, this was an OCS game. It ran, it, in fact, I had to run it under 1.2 to get it to work right. It, this would not work uh, on, on, uh, on, new, on like an Amiga yeah. 1200 setting and yeah, like the that. New, the newer systems, yeah. So, what is Designosaurus? All right. I hope you tell me because I played it. And I well, I'm going to try to tell you. <laughs> okay, again, again, it was created by Ezra Sidron and published by Britannia. Yeah, and yeah. this is a game that helps you learn about dinosaurs. No, it does. Oh. Hold on. Uh, there are. It provides the child, and let's assume this is a child, with three different activities. The brand walk a walk a dinosaur. Two Which, that, activities. Walk a dinosaur is not what I would call what that part of the game is. <laughs> Build a dinosaur. Yeah. And then everyone's favorite, print a dinosaur. No. So, Brent, let's talk about these in order of their appearance in the game. All right. Uh, what were your thoughts on Walk a Dinosaur? Do you want to explain what Walk a Dinosaur is? Walk a Dinosaur is by far the best part of the game. Did you have more luck with this than I did? Um. Well... Let's talk about what it is first. Okay, go like, ahead. We, we don't I'm go sorry. I'm right sorry. Into the go ahead. Go ahead. You choose between three dinosaurs. Yeah. The Brontosaurus, the Stegosaurus, or the uh, T Rex. Right. And your goal is to go through five screens, six screens, I cannot remember which. And each screen is supposed to represent a time period that the dinosaur. Uh, live through. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So you fire it up, and regard if you pick, say, the first one I picked was Stegosaurus, one of my one of my more favorite. Not me. Dinosaurs. Yeah. So you pick Stegosaurus. Now Stegosaurus was a grass eater, a plant eater. 
and the goal is to survive. You have to get through the screens. So I literally would hit go in the game, I'm dead. Just that fast. Because what happens is a Tyrannosaurus Rex comes out of nowhere, grapples your dinosaur, and kills him instantly. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah, yeah. No time to even think. So I played several more times, and I was like, well, crap. I can't. This ain't going to work. So I said, okay, Brontosaurus, big old neck, huge, huge beast of a dinosaur, eats up in the trees. That's why I'm there. Ah, I'm yeah. thinking now. Yeah. I'm thinking. Pick him, dead. Dead immediately. He's not that quick. Okay, so now I'm like, all right. I see what's going on here. They want you to play the big dog. They want you to play the meat eater, the real juice, you know, dig in there and get get your claws dirty. They want to traumatize children. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You um, should mention that when you're eating, it's a violent eating. Oh, it's blood yeah. and yeah. everything. Well, it's, it's not it, blood, but it's no, not. No, there is. It's not, it's not, I wouldn't call it bloody. But it is. It doesn't sound good. It sounds like the dinosaur was eating another dinosaur. When you are the Stegosaurus and you get eaten by a T-Rex, he flips you on your back and eats your belly. He does. He does do that. So, He's yes. hungry. He's a hungry dinosaur. So, when you pick the T-Rex, now you're the meat eater, right? And yeah. you see all the other dinosaurs just run off screen. And you're left there to starve to death and you eventually well, that's die. See, that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out here. I played the Tyrannosaurus Rex first because I am... I was a big T-Rex fan when I was a kid. Right. I've told you the story. You have. You thought there was only one. I thought there was only one, and his name was Rex. Yeah. And I thought, that's great. Sort of like Godzilla. So I'm always partial to the big guy. So he was the first one I played. And right away, these stupid dinosaurs come staggering on the screen. And you run up to him, and you hit the button, and he he bites them. Yep. Right? And so I was like, man, I'm killing it here. Right? And then another dumb dinosaur comes staggering in. I even got to the point... Where it flipped screens. Did you know that? Yeah. To another background. Oh, I have things to talk about. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, keep going. And keep so going. I would eat the next round of dinosaurs. Eat them, right? The problem is the T-Rex needs tons and tons of calories. Tons. All right? And yes. so, I mean, the T-Rex is it has to be a like, like, I don't know, Pac-Man. He has to nonstop eat. Yes. If he, much like myself, if he goes even... Uh, 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 30 seconds not eating. Dead. He falls over in, in, a, in a slump. He's dead. Yes. He is... So, the other two dinosaurs have to eat leaves to survive. Grass yeah. or treetops. And and he has to eat the other dinosaurs. Yes. But it, there's no clear path to success in this part of the game that I found. Well, Aaron, I'm going to blow your mind. Okay, please. And, and I'm being 100% sincere with this. All right. I beat the game. You beat the game? I beat. Design of source. Okay, how did you do this? Because I, I, much like you, I found it difficult. Step one, I picked Brontosaurus. Okay, br- really? I, I'm eating the trees. Yeah. Right? As soon as the game starts, T Rex is going to attack you. Yeah. You run. You run away. And then once you get him behind you a little bit, every once in a while you'll have another T uh, Rex come on screen, but you can you can juke him just well enough. To get through all the screens. Now, you have to eat the treetops of every screen after the first to, to maintain your calories to make the journey. Yeah. But if you do it, Aaron, if you do it, you are rewarded with a certificate that says that you beat the game that you can print off. Now, Man, I wish you'd printed that. I, well, my printer failed when I tried to print it. Yeah, it won't, so. mine wouldn't work yeah. either. <laughs> That's but astounding to me that you pulled I, I that off. I did it. I, I beat it with the Brontosaurus. Yes. That is astounding to me, the Brent. I am very impressed. So, did you try beating it with any of the other guys? Oh, I tried. Could you use the same strategy with, say, the uh, Stegosaurus? No. And at least I couldn't figure it out because the Stegosaurus is so long. I mean, Brontosaurus is long too. Don't get me wrong, but he's more high than yeah. wide, and I could never get him maneuvered around the first T Rex. Yeah. So I, I just died continuously through yeah. it. Yeah. The uh, now, so with all that said, yes. Uh, what would you deem the educational value of this particular portion of the game? Being a dinosaur sucked. Everyone's gonna die. You have no life. A violent death. Yes. Unless or starving to death. Which it's, it's sure doesn't sound no like way a good to way go. to go. No right. way to go. Yeah. This I would deem the educational portion of this part of the game zero. 
Zero well, percent. I, I learned that pain is real. Yeah. And it was real for the dinosaurs as well. So What I learned was we didn't need it. Uh, they didn't need a fireball from space to kill them off. Their chances of survival, given their parameters of their lives, are practically zero. Exactly. <laughs> they had very little chance. I mean, because you could only eat so fast. The tyrant. I mean, you. If, when I tell you the tyrannosaurus was eating, every five minutes he would eat five Three or four six dinosaurs. Dinos- yeah. yeah, complete dinosaurs. I mean, how? You know, how could you possibly eat that much? Is there any animal that has to eat that much to survive that long? Maybe an amoeba or something, some kind of microscopic thing. I don't know. If you gave me some time, I'm sure I could find it. Or some kind of weird sea creature. But this isn't weird sea creature, Saurus. Well, I mean, he's a big boy. Well, I'm just saying. So I'm going to deem that section of the game uh, crapo grande. Did not like. So then you've got... Best part of the game. Build, that is? Yes. The one we just talked about? Absolutely. You're right. That's that's the bad part of this. (laughs) Then you've got build... A dinosaur. Yes, the Brent. Now, what would tell the people what you, uh, what's going on with build a dinosaur? It's the, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of mystery in the name. There's a lot, there's a lot you you hear build a source that can mean anything. <laughs> build a dinosaur, but what is it? What is that? What is that? So you are given a select a, a I think a four drawer filing cabinet that has. Head, neck, body, legs. And from those filing cabinets, it has some form of dinosaur head. Brontosaurus head, uh, pterodactyl head, tyrannosaurus head. And you take it and you (laughs) say, okay, I'm picking this one. And then you go to the next filing cabinet and you pick the neck, you know, area. And then you pick the body and then you pick the, the, the leg and tails. And then you you have a dinosaur. That's right. And uh, you got well, one more thing. Oh, and then you can print your dinosaur. No, you forgot one. Oh. You get to name it. Oh, that's you true. You get to name the dinosaur. In fact, uh, Pajaco uh, sh- uh, named the Pajacosaurus or whatever was in Discord. He went, through the, he went through the procedure. And then once you have finished making your dinosaur, you can, in fact, print the dinosaur. You can fail to print your dinosaur. That's well, you right. could also, one thing you can do is when you hit print, one of the options is show dinosaur. So you can at least what you see what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah. That's if you don't true. have a printer or view dinosaur. Now, you only the skeleton. It's not like it renders it out. Which would have been cool or had it walk around or, or had anything. Or put into the game at the beginning of the game. That would have been neat. That would have been or awesome. Or to show you the advantages. Like, I, the, one of the things it says is like, okay. Like, for example, I, I used uh, uh, the smallest head yeah. with, uh, like, a, a Tyrannosaurus back, and then I used, the like, the Brontosaurus's tail, and I, came, I made a real calamity. But I mixed different dinosaurs together to come up with something that doesn't exist, and the thing said the bottom, it said, due to what you put together, we do not sure what you're going to eat. I was like, well, that's not that scientific. None of this is scientific, including this. No, this was... Uh, Although this did have some educational merit. Like what? Just the, the well, it, it reading did, the stuff? Yeah, it describes what type of head and some of the uh, the, the uh, features of it. Oh, it's same with the body and everything else. So there is some educational saying that the information is correct. What happens when the kid that's trying to get this education makes his own dinosaur and goes, Teacher, what's this? I mean, is this a, what are we teaching the kids here? No, 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 no. I don't have a problem with that because a lot of science is accepting we don't know everything. So maybe this could exist or we should find out why this couldn't exist. So I don't have a problem with that. Is that the way physiology works? Someone somewhere just mix and match parts all over the earth to come up with pandas and shell and no. shellfish well, and and uh, uh, dinosaurs and canaries and, and bananas. Here's what are we doing? Here's something you have to realize, Aaron. Dinosaurs they old. Yeah. So when you find a a dinosaur part in a <clears throat> in the ground, yeah, you try to fit it with the other dinosaur parts that you find around it. Maybe two dinosaurs died at the same time that were different dinosaurs. Yeah. So you've got to figure out that those parts don't join. Right, but. You are joining different parts in this. And this, it, this what and kind it, of lesson is this? But it tells you no that that, that ain't you know this, that ain't gonna work, man. It didn't say that. Well, I mean, it I, never said that one time. It said that's crazy. Who knows what it eats? That's well, what it said. Well, I, I in my mind, the game is reprimanding you. 
<laughs> so when the game doesn't do what you expect, you just make up your own game? Yeah, that, that usually works Well, then works guess out. what? I hope you got something ready to go for part three of the dinosaur. <laughs> part three, remi- this part needs, it requires a vivid imagination. When we get to everyone's favorite print a dinosaur Brent tell them about print a dinosaur I'm sorry your printer is not capable <laughs> so I will say when you go to print a dinosaur they've got a crap load of pictures of dinosaurs yeah. and by that I mean like 12 okay they're also black and white did yes. I mention that yep so well, you, you've got the you option expect the people to have a color printer here and you've got the option of printing a t-shirt iron-on, which just came with iron-on sheets. Yep. And by the way, don't That's worry, folks. Good. You can buy more. Uh, it all. You also can print a regular sheet of paper, and yep. you can also print a poster of yep. your dinosaur, which presumably, from back in those days, would mean it would print like nine sheets, and you kind of glue them together. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. You know how much I hated that? How much I painted? And you never get them lined up right when you did that. Well, I mean, if you're not incompetent, you do. That's it, by the way, for printed dinosaur. You can oh, I forgot you can view the yeah. dinosaur as well. So let's recap, shall we? Right. You had that. You had the walk very the first walk at walk a dinosaur where you did where that's not what it is. Where you do everything but walk. But that's best part of the game. You walk the dinosaur, and it's horrible. Educational value zero. Zero. All then right. you've got the uh, design a dinosaur, yep. make a dinosaur. Uh huh. And then you've got... No, no, wait. Di- I'm sorry. Design a dinosaur. Some educational I value. I don't want to jump the gun on that one. Go ahead. Some educational value. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a thing. And then print a dinosaur. Um, no educational value. A super tech boy ass doesn't play the song Walk the Dinosaur. No, but it does play a song. I'm glad you brought that up. When the game first come up, comes up, you get this kind of cool picture of a bunch of dinosaurs hanging out. And then, and by the way, they use the same dinosaur pictures for when you fight. Every time, yeah. But it goes, you hear this, the doom, 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 the Zonosaurus. Doom, 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 the Zonosaurus. Boom, 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 boom. The Zonosaurus. That's the song. <laughs> the Zonosaurus. Over and over. And it never stops. Nope. I'm assuming the military genius was involved in that. That's Since they had the musical credit, I'm sure that's where the military genius came in to put that together. Now, Aaron, I have a question for you. Yeah, man. Does this qualify as an edutainment game? Yes. It has the education. Oh, well, it has the hold on, hold on, hold on. It doesn't have any. You learn very little from this game. It, you still you learn more about dinosaurs than if you didn't play it. If you, uh, if you read yeah, the screen, okay, yeah, yeah, it definitely that. has the pain. That the, Yes, it's got that. The walk to the dinosaur is an absolute gut-riching lesson in life. Yeah, it is gut wrenching. I do uh, that too. Uh, it, it, it does not let you let you move on until you fail over and over. Now, and it, and it has the reward aspect of being able to print stuff off. Yeah. So if you've got a printer. You know, Plus, we need to call up. We needed Chris Edwards in here who spent a couple episodes getting a printer hooked up to his Amiga. This is the game for you, Chris Edwards. That's the Amigos challenge. I want you to make a dinosaur up, call it a Chris Edward Soros, and print it out on your Amiga 1000. There you go. Um, believe it or not, I got some reviews for this, if you can imagine. Um, Lemon gives this a 7.5. Oh, yeah. 7.5. So this is way better than almost everything we ever play. No. Um, no. The Amiga Resource gave this a 14 out of 20. And, uh, 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 the uh, Antics Amiga Plus magazine gave this a four and a half out of five, and Info gave this a four out of five. If you could believe that, so no. this actually no, I, it I happened. Think, I think we can all agree those store scores were bought with the hottest of money. You think those were bought scores? Someone yes. bought the scores? Come yes. on, no one bought those. There is no way, Aaron. How in the world? I'm looking at this from a child's perspective, right? Okay, that seems appropriate for you. How in the world? Can you justify those scores? Well, I, I can't. I'll be honest with you. I can't justify them. But we did get a, a, a review from a listener here, which I was so happy we did. And that was our good buddy, the Pajokster, Pajako6502. He writes, A potentially great educational title. However, it falls short of the greatness that could have been. Boy, does it ever. 
I really want to bring my abomination to life, either as a simple animation or in the walk dino section. Yes, that would have been amazing. This also could have been better. Trying to keep your beast alive requires very precise mouth controls to eat plants. Avoiding the T-Rex is impossible. And as the T-Rex, everything kept running off before I could eat it. So I killed a lot of dinosaurs. The print and coloring sections may have been fun. However, I couldn't try them due to a major bug. The entire game will exit if you try anything that requires a printer with no printer yes. connected. Which I can imagine will be upsetting the young children. A great opportunity missed by the developers. Four out of ten, Brent. Sort of a sort of a burial there. I, I think that is a a a probably too high of a score. Well, listen, I'm this is more of a three territory. Let me tell you why everyone's wrong here. Because uh -oh. here's what we've got, and I want to this this bears repeating here. Uh, in 1988, Di Designosaurus won the best educational and best preschool primary school program Cody Award. This is a Cody Award winner, uh, the Brent. So there you go. You, you the Codys don't lie. So if you're, what are you looking over there for? Because I'm wondering how much they paid for that. What you <laughs> you think that? Wait a minute. You think the people that made the Zotosaurus had a deep pockets? They went out to bribe the Codys to put them over. They, yeah, because they had plenty of money from not designing a piece of software. Uh, that's that's harsh. I should mention that the Zotosaurus had a sequel. Yes. The Zynosaurus 2, uh, released in 1990 for DOS. Now, yeah, it looked better. It looked better. It yeah. did. It also, I heard that they brought in actual experts, and so the game was also more educational and more accurate. So, your mileage may vary. I will say this. After seeing the Dinosaurus 1 on DOS, I would stay away from any Dinosaur title on DOS like Grim Death. It did not look good, it no. It looked, looked positively hideous. So... Oh, I did look this up on eBay, believe it or not. Well, why not? That's what we do, right? If you want a copy of Dinosaurus, in, a Dinosaurus, excuse me, in a, in, a <laughs> Dinosaurus, if you want a copy of Dinosaurus in America for 13 US dollars, that'll get you a complete in-box copy. Now, I cannot verify that the t-shirt iron-ons are still intact or still or there. usable. <laughs> yeah, but, the, you know, there you go. So, if you're interested in picking this up, hey, was this one that you might be interested in picking up somewhere down the line to Brent? No. I mean, maybe to burn it in some kind of effigy. <laughs> wow. That's a big old burial. Good Lord. Well, so I think that will draw the book closed. Yes. On not only Designosaurus, but the edutainment category, at least for a while here in Amigos. This was the weakest of the edutainment tiles we've played by a long shot. When I sat down and played this and I was done in like two seconds, I'm yeah. like, oh, crap. And it's gonna be <laughs> yeah, you can burn through the game pretty quick. Yeah, quit. yeah. Also, there's only one review online, the video of it. It was just, it was bad, brother. I don't recommend it. So, Brent, are you ready to go on to the uh, site? Yeah, updates? let's get some site news. Let's do it. Site. So, it's been a, uh, a marginally busy week uh, this week, uh, the Brent. Uh, let's start with ourselves. I always like doing that. <laughs> Because Lead the, with strength. Who can get enough of That's us? That's a good call. Last week on ARG Presents, uh, the Brad... Down vote? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's because of Baraticus. That thing's garbage. Oh, okay. That's Last fair. week, we played games that become other games, the Brent. Uh, a goofy category. Uh, I can't recall who suggested it, but they were out of their minds. And we ended up picking uh, games Time Pilot from the arcade and Baraticus, a.k.a. Bandersnatch, yes. uh, on the Amiga. We don't usually cover that many Amiga titles on the uh, show, and I can tell you right now, uh, I'm not sure we covered one this past week <laughs> because Baraticus is one of the. It's when I think of, I mean, even stuff like first person pinball, even even something like I'm wearing the shirt uh, uh, for Top Banana here. As crummy as Top Banana is, I'd say Baraticus is ten times worse because it it's is. uncontrollable slop. Yep. Now I did have some people message me that said, "Hey, listen, underneath." This uh, upper tier of crapiola, there's some deep uh, plot stuff going on or whatever. But I mean, if you can't control yourself to get out of the first part of the first yeah. room, it's irrelevant. Well, on, on the upside, the stories for uh, how Time Pilots became Time Pilots and how uh, Bandersnatch became Baraticus is interesting 
which actually makes the video interesting. So give that a watch for sure. Yeah, I like the time pilot part. That was a lot of fun to research too. So check us out. We've it, it was pretty well received. Also, I was very sick, so you can uh, yeah, and that, hear me be miserable. You kept that going on all week long. So next on the docket, myself, John Boat of Car Schaller, everyone's favorite. We did a little thing called the Coco Show, the Brent, and we played a game from our good buddy Nick Marentes called Donut Dilemma. Brent, have you played Donut Dilemma? I have not, but it sounds delicious. I don't know if we had this one back in the day, but this is a fun platformer, uh, the Brent, where you actually traverse up many different levels with many different gimmicks, get to the roof of your uh, donut factory. Wait a minute, how do you get past that donut there? Oh, you've got a way to throw dough at the donuts. Oh, yeah, but you okay. have a limited amount of dough that you can throw, bro. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> but this is a great game. We had a lot of fun with this one. Listen, this one's got everything going for it. Yeah, Variety, it looks really good. Multiple levels. A uh, little d d talks. Oh. At one point. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did that man just explode? He does melt slightly melt when you kill him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so check this out. That was uh, horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. When you get killed, he fell into his doom. You know, what do you want? What do you want, a soft dainty? This is just Dude, like the I am traumatized. This is like the Zodasaurus. Oh, my gosh. Right, you need to, kids need to learn. So that's Donut Dilemma. Uh, that's the Coco Show 26 with the genius Nick Morantes. Always working on something cool is Nick. And I love that about him. That's the good thing about the Coco. There's always new stuff coming out on it. Of course, that one's not new. Now, <laughs> this guy... What a piece of work. Listen, someone brought a turkey in with Jack Flack on its butt. Or I may have that backwards. Either way it goes, this is Sprite Castle plays viewer request. Look at that hat, the Brent, what? on the Flack. What do you think about that? That is a, that's a good looking bird. That right is, there. it's a good looking bird. And Flack, what a crowd he drew uh, this week. And it wasn't just the hat. It was also the gameplay. Uh, I'm going to guess it was most of the Because it was, it was viewer request night, a very rare occurrence on the Sprite Castle plays. And Flack came in, guns blazing, to play all your favorites and some not-so-favorites on the C64. Uh, stuff I'd never heard of. Henry's House is a good example. Here's one I requested. The Brent oh, Forbidden that's a Forest. good one. He didn't do too good. Uh, but it was fun to watch him get killed and make fun of him. I can see him getting mauled by a spider there. I also requested this one. Where he also got killed and we made fun of him. Blue Max, great this game. This was sort of the this is the sort of the message of the night. Watch Jack Black get killed, laugh. Although, I'm not gonna lie, later on he plays some games and he tears them up. By the way, you should see his performance at Poo Yan. God awful, Brent. It was Oh, that, that's that's the Oh man, he was stinking it up. Well he, he's a turkey. Why he got he a lot, the pig? He did a lot better at some of the other stuff. So check him out. Man, I have to say this was a great stream and it went on for a while, so you've got a good long run here. Two hours, thirty five minutes. He even played this game that we actually played on the Amiga, this really unusual platform that I didn't even know how to see 64 release. So something you should definitely check out. Awesome. It's our, it's awesome. our good buddy, Jack Fleck over at Sprite Castle Plays. Now, holy cow. This is one of those uh, videos, you don't release it, it escapes. You know what I mean? Yes. Me and the boat recorded this a couple weeks ago, and it took me forever to get this thing up on YouTube. It's WrestleMania, the VCR board game playthrough. Boat knew this was going to be a popular topic, and as you can tell, it's blown to the roof. WrestleMania, people clamoring for the VCR <laughs> the, game. The view count so high, it looped on itself. <laughs> it did. Uh, we did have an awful lot of fun playing this. For one thing, when you pick the first card, you, it's a promo card. You have to cut a promo on your opponent. You know I'm always down for that. And then you get into the VCR portions of the game as you go around the board, uh, the Brent. Now, I will say... Due to certain, uh, you know, gimmicks with the with the way things are, you can't just play those things. You got to put a little spin on them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Some other stuff. So you may notice that when you actually get to the portion of the VCR tape, uh, you, there's a little, a little there's a little wacky action. But I can safely say this is the only playthrough of the WWF uh, VCR board game and on all of YouTube. Trust me, no one would be stupid enough to try this again. So. If you think that might be interesting, you just want to watch a couple goofballs do goofy stuff and act goofy. And Brent, I think you would enjoy this. Eh, one. I've got a mirror. Rest to take off. Well, I'll be oh, yeah. There you good point. WrestleMania, the VCR board game playthrough, and both tells me we'll be doing more of these playthroughs. So get ready. Da -da 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 -da. This seems like a whole other show right here. Oh, get someone get butt on the phone. Oh man, look at this.
Gutsy, Gutsy, our good buddy Frodo, Frodo and Al, the first year of the Atari ST. Holy, holy moly. And I'm going to be getting into this ST stuff That's hot and heavy. Yeah. So this is going to be something I'm going to use as a reference. Frodo knows his way around these systems. Look at that. An excellent version of Crystal Castle. Looks right beautiful. There. Looks right nice, there. doesn't yes. it? Listen, the ST, when we did our Amiga versus Atari ST show uh, back in the day, Brent, we were both impressed with the ST's abilities to perform. Absolutely. For the, at that price yeah. point. You have to realize that uh, uh, the, R, the ST doesn't is kind of lost to history uh, because when you look back at it now and compare it to Amiga, it, you, you forget that this was out prior to Amiga. Yeah. Cheaper than Amiga yeah. when it came out. You know, there's so many factors. If you don't think about that, you lose you lose perspective. That's right. And uh, uh, it is important. The cost was a, a deal. Now, granted, the uh, operating system, when it boots up, it looks like double secret garbage. Well, it's not like... It's the worst. It's not no. like the Amigas is It's much the better. worst. No, the Amigas is way better. Uh, but It's better, but it costs you. But you've got, you know, one thing you've got when you've got Atari in your back pocket, you've got all these games straight from the arcade. Tons of classics. And you've right got stuff like Crystal Castles. You've got Gauntlet. Here's, ja here's uh, Frodo playing Joust. That looks like world class leaderboard golf right there, or one of the leaderboard golfs, which we both love. That looks like the, uh, that probably is leaderboard one. Uh, you've got a lot of good stuff here. Frodo went to work. Spy Hunter. Now, I know that game. We've played that in Major Motion on the Amiga, so that's a good one. Mud Pies. Plays a lot of good stuff here. Absolutely. So, so you've, you're talking three hours and some change of first year. I love when Frodo does these first years. By the way, Time Bandits, some of the stuff we've seen from the Coco. It's amazing that there's a couple Coco ports that got over here. And the guys that made Major Motion worked, I believe, worked on Time Bandit. On the, uh, uh, on, uh, that was one of their babies. Uh, oh, no, I take that back. They worked on uh, uh, Buzzard Bait. I think it was on the mm. Coco. Anyway, interesting stuff here. And Frodo has enough personality for, for five guys, you know. And I not do, just the hamburger chain. I do miss his hair, uh, but then again, I miss my own hair as well. Frodo had some crazy hair a while back. But also, this is a guy who will get into a penguin suit if you, if you, if you ask him. I like <laughs> a guy that will do that. So that's, that's the Froadster. And then, look at this. Coming back uh, for an Encore presentation. The newest... I haven't even got to hear this one yet. Oh, this is hot off the presses. Holy smokes. This has just been up 17 minutes ago. That had to be timed perfectly. It's the Flaxster. Holy... Look at this tagline here. It, 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 has he been talking to Boat? He's got it written here as Popeye better than Donkey Kong. Sprite Castle 69 Popeye. A brazen... A brazen topic there, bro. What do you think? Papa better than Donkey Kong? No. No, of course not. Because the scoring in Donkey Kong is remarkable. And at their core... The story. The scoring? Scoring. That's where you're going with yeah. that? Because at their core, they're both high score games, right? Um, and I, I feel that the scoring, even though it's got some display issues where it says one score and actually gives you points values of another, that's Donkey Kong... I still think the scoring is more interesting in Donkey Kong. Not to say that Popeye doesn't have some interesting scoring. It does. But I think that Donkey Kong has better scoring. Gameplay perspective, I think they're so equal that you have to go to something else to decide which is the better game. Which one do you think has better gameplay? I think... I feel like I just said this. I mean, They're I don't... So I, don't I have wool. No, they, I, would, I don't want that. Which one has better gameplay? I don't want you to cop out and be a fence walker. Make a call. Um, I mean, if you if you've got to choose, you, I, I think. Um, oh man, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to go Donkey Kong still. Yeah, I but I think it's so. I think it's close. That's the I think correct an argument, answer. I think an argument can be made that Popeye has more variety, and thus making it the better game. More variety. Yeah, it's got less screen, but it still has more variety. How do you figure? Uh, you're not, I mean, with the exception of one Donkey Kong level, you're always just trying to get to the top. Yeah. Well, there you go. Let's talk about, uh, last on the docket here, uh, our good buddy of the boat and our good buddy Neil, a.k.a. RMC. They've got a new uh, This Week in Retro, just popped about six days ago, and it's the Doctor Who on the C64, question mark, and they've also got a number of other topics. 
including, and I want to touch base with you on this one, Brett, have retro games psychologically damaged you? What do you think? Because something no. did it. What was it? It could have been games. Oh, no. It's when you pile drive me on concrete. Oh, it's just blame me for everything. I don't remember that happening. That sounds like a bunch of hearsay to me, uh, the brand. Uh, it says here, a C64 popped up on Doctor Who. I don't know what Doctor Who they're talking about here, but I, I don't feel good about that because <laughs> the Doctor Who's here recently, man. I don't know. You know, it's funny, though. I was watching, uh, gosh, what was I watching that night? And all of a sudden, an Amiga popped up right in the screen. Some kind of film from the 80s. They come up now and again, uh, these, these things. Uh, you've also got Boat. Here we are again with the Boat's Amiga 2000 mechanical keyboard. He went on a long diatribe about this last week before I ex explained to him that it wouldn't work where he wanted it to, but he, he finally figured it out. But someone's putting together one of these. Not a bad idea for the 2000. I love mechanical you know, if you could, keyboards. If you, if you could, oh, yeah, they're the best, aren't they? I think they're great. So if you want to check out uh, our good friend uh, Neil from AKRMC, fresh from his freshly minted man cave, uh, the, the cave, if you will, uh, where he has just put together his museum, then you should check this out. It's great. And, we, of course, our own John Boat of Karshaw are always a pleasure to see the boatster out there, Brent, taking care of business. And I do hope Boat's having a good time on his uh, trip this week. It, I'm sure he's having a great time out with his wife. Tenth anniversary. Congratulations to those two. Two nice folks. So, let's move down the line here, Brent, as we're putting this thing to bed here at the end of the day. So, we're not. We're going to kick right past the uh, old Patreon saw. I don't feel comfortable uh, with a Patreon performance without the boat being here. And my throat is a little too raspy. That's true. Also, we've uh, the eight or nine hours <clears throat> that we've been we've been at it. I'm not sure we can actually get it done. But I will say this: a boat does say he's having a great time. That's outstanding. It's, and you know, it's a great uh, celebration of ten years when he's boat sitting around on. on on Twitch, watching us do the show. I'm sure he's shaking his fist at us the whole time. Um, Brent, mm. uh, we sure uh, appreciate you filling in for us uh, tonight. I appreciate me too. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Okay, I take that back. Let's have a quick look at who it, we've got here in the chat room with. Holy smokes. What a crowd. Good Lord, it, rolled, it scrolled right off the freaking screen, Brent. Let's go through the list here. Uh, we've got uh, Amiga Live, of course, Etten. Awkward Aardvark, Amaz uh, Azamon, I almost called him Amazon, BarkBit, Bike Me, BitStorm, of course, John Bodokar, Shark, O'Brien, Commander Root, Doc Krabs, uh, fresh off his new home. Uh, we've got uh, Dancing Wolf, Dazman79, The Demo Scene TV, Eora4, how do you pronounce that? That's Eeyore, like, like from Disney. Like the donkey? Man, I wouldn't go with that. Anyway, she's a, she's a great lady. Uh, Emily Gray. Frodo and L, Happy Coding ZX. He's been here all day. HSI, Heisken, uh, Ian, John Marshall in Charles, West Virginia, our good buddy. Uh, I butchered this last time. Cac Caxipus 06. Want to go with that, Brent? You're reading them, buddy. Kedian. Uh, Kedian. <laughs> Ladybug. Uh, Lenar Ray. Laserdisc. Uh, L. Curtis Boyle, all hail. Lord Soup, Manning Wilkins, Mitsuyama, Orob, Ogre of Hope, Picard, 2010. What a year that was, by the way. Remember 2010? Eh. Before it all went downhill? No, it already went downhill well, in 2008. Pretty, what happened in 2008? Uh, the whole stock market crash. Oh, the, yeah. All the real estate I forgot about banks that. failed. Listen, they, yeah, a lot of that was hearsay. Uh, Ramastino. <laughs> R Jolly 42, Spike Trap Claire. Am I getting these right? You come close. Super Tech Boy, Texas Foos Bar, The Retroist, The Slow Norse, B K, Vector Funk. I love it. Wild World of Retro, aka David Z, master of the 3D print. I should mention that we use David Z's handiwork all day long right here beside me. Uh, to uh, get through the uh, get through the Thanks for Giving Marathon. Yes. Thank you, Dave. A wise, a good job. Of course, our good buddy Explorer and Zook Seven Four. Did you skip Worlds of Rogue? Worlds of Retro. No, no, no. Did I skip him? I think you skipped. Some Holy one. smoke! Worlds Dude, of Rogue. Well, you know what? Just start over from the top. No, take off. <laughs> You're right. I did skip Worlds of Rogue. I apologize. Oh, worry, Worlds I got of Rogue. you. Listen, you don't want to piss off the rogues. 
You know what I mean? They'll take care of your. They'll take take care of your business big time. They'll touch you, sugar. What's it? <laughs> what? What does that mean? Rogue. The... X Men. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what that was. <laughs> Holy, God. that was. If that's your best rogue. That was that was that was horrible. That throat thing. Real. <laughs> Boy, you're really milking that. Real quick before we go, I'm going to scroll over here. You know, we have a uh, a little gimmick here, Brent, where we uh, play games every week, and they try to beat each other's high scores. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And we've got a game going right now, and I believe the boys are playing Frankie Goes to Hollywood, if I'm not mistaken, because we'll be covering that on our next R. Sinclair, if you can believe it, uh, the Brent. So if you want to get in on that, who does it? By the way, were you a big fan of Frankie back in the day? I don't recall what that is. You don't know who Frankie goes who Frankie goes to Hollywood is? Have you heard that song? Relax, don't do it when you want to. No. Yeah, you have heard that. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's Frankie goes to Hollywood. He was a big deal. I don't know how you play that as a game. What do you mean? I, but, but it's a band. It's a band. Right. Well, they've got their own game. Oh, what's right. the What's the problem here? Wow. Why? How hard is this, man? Prince had his own game. <sighs> Well, that wasn't a game. It was an interactive uh, gimmick with him. So, yeah, go check that out. That should be a lot of fun. One, I've got two things I want to close up with here. All right. The brand. And this one's of vital importance. You know, it's all going down on the Amigos Discord. And what's going down is the Amigos Christmas Exchange. Secret Santa, the brand. Have I seen your name on the Secret Santa list? I don't think so. You have not. What's going on with you? Uh, Let me guess the voice minutes so you couldn't type. That's right. Listen, get in there. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, we are on the Discord. We Every year we get a group of people together and do Secret Santa all over the world. I've had Bark bit twice and sent him out and stuff. I bet he was that second time. I bet he was dreading that. You know, so this time, who knows who we're going to get? Except you. You know who you're getting, Barkbit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, actually, this year, I'm actually sort of in charge somehow. And so I, I'll get, I guess I get to mix it up. I don't know how I'm going to trick myself. Uh, but anyway. You should put everyone's name on the wheel. Yeah. No, That's not all on the guy. wheel. Uh, we're going to shut down uh, taking, <laughs> we're going to shut this thing down. I think the 30th is the deadline, if I'm not mistaken. So. What I would do, if I were you guys, if you're interested in getting involved in the, the Amigo Secret Santa, the Brent, rush into the Amigo Secret Santa on Discord, Secret Santa, put your name on the form. Listen, uh, for those that are, that are sort of like hesitant, oh, it might be bad, I don't want to get screwed, so don't worry about it. Everyone's cool. Everyone's getting screwed. So Every, you won't no, be, no. You no. won't stick out. Listen, David Z demanded Secret Santa this year, and I can't say no to Dave. And so we're doing it. We've had good response. Don't be bashful. This is a good way to get weird stuff, you know, or stuff. And listen, what's the worst that's going to happen? Chlamydia. They said, <laughs> it's not that bad. Chlamydia? No. You're going to get cool stuff. It's going to be a good time. Don't listen to him. I promise you. I guarantee you, as I'm the resident Santa. Don't listen to him. He's a jerk. I, he's not getting nothing but coal. Uh, you know, and we're having I mean, trouble I'll getting that these days. I live in West Virginia. Yeah. So, Secret Santa. It's going to be happening. Second second item on the docket. Uh, starting, it's either up or will be up in the next few days, the next sign-up sheet for the International Computer Club, Brent. Yes. It's almost time to go back to the computer club. This will be happening in, uh, I can't remember the exact day. It's in, it's in uh, the late part of, of January. It'll be International Computer Club. If you're interested in doing something on International Computer Club, please sign up now. Again, no project too small, no presentation too goofy. Sign up. We'll take anything. Uh, we always have a good time, and people uh, always want more Computer Club. They're wanting me to do this thing monthly, by month. Like, what are you trying to do? We can't have it that much. I or, just wonder why you just don't run it every night and be done with it. Are you it. kidding me? Every night, trying to kill me? Yeah. Free copy of Desinosaurus for the best presentation. They don't have to club. Not really. That would be a punishment. Um, so there's that. And lastly, uh, we are beginning uh, scheduling for the big karaoke event for December. If you are a member of the Discord community, on Amigos Discord community, again, if you're not, why aren't you? Get in there. You know, it's cheap. A couple bucks on Patreon, you're in, brother. Uh, and we will be kicking that up uh, probably sometime, the Brent, in the next two or three weeks. You know, we'll we'll give you details. We want to see everyone 
on that night. We want you to play along with us. We want to hear you sing. Uh, we'll take videos or whatever and play them. We're going to get a big thing together. Thank yeah, you because it. animated GIFs of uh, karaoke, not so not good. Not so good, not so good. And someone mentioned Conversation of the Dark Side, Super Tech Boy. Conversation of the Dark Side... Uh, it didn't it was it did okay on YouTube? It did pretty good on the MP3. It did pretty well on the on the podcast. I was surprised, and so we're gonna kick that back up in sometime in January. I'll be doing another conversations that will probably be a monthly uh, at this from this point on, and it will probably be uh, uh, I don't know how we're gonna distribute it yet. It's I've got its own YouTube page, its own Twitch channel, uh, but we'll see what happens. As a monthly, I might be able to go ahead and keep it on Amiga. Want we'll to talk to the boat and see what we're gonna do? But we're gonna get it we're gonna get it together. Uh, oh yes, Dave. Thank you. Since we're making announcements, uh, please every Saturday night, the TSI Team Speaker Regulars are live on the Team Speaker Regulars on Twitch. That's all one word: the Team Speaker Regulars. Please tune in. Give them an ad. These are all of our buddies. It's always uh, Spartan, the Chud, David Z, uh, uh, Texas Foosballer, Morgan, Good Matt. All these guys. Big, yeah, Matt's in there. Uh, the, it's a ton. Of, it's the usual suspects plus whoever else shows up. Edvin, Jack Flack. You never know who's going to be in there. Of course, pa- Paco. Can't forget Paco. So it's always a good time. Uh, please. Yeah, yeah, Soup's usually in there watching along with Picard. So check that out as well. I think we've announced every conceivable thing. Rick, can you think of anything else we need to take care of before we take things out? I do not believe so. Listen, thank you again for filling in for the boat. We appreciate it. We appreciate all y'all for tuning in today uh, for Design Asaurus. So I don't know what the next game is. Mystery game next week. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, it should be a good time. Listen, it's all uphill from here after playing what we just played. That thing was... Dutto Grande. Brent, say goodbye to the nice people. We're getting out of here. Uh, until next time around, we hope you have a happy weekend. And until next time, we give you a far... Uh, no, not that. What do the amigos say? They say, adios. adios.